This is Ron Brown with Tech for Senior, where we make videos to help seniors understand technology and occasionally talk about history. Today, we're going to talk about why cable companies exist. Now, this is a follow up on a video that I made last week on how to save a lot of money on your cable internet service. But I wanted just to talk a little bit about the history of cable companies through my eyes as I remember this growing up so I can relate to specific years and events. We'd sure appreciate it if you would like and subscribe to the channel. Everyone at Tech for Senior is a volunteer and we'd sure appreciate that like and subscribe. It really helps the channel. Let's get on with a bit of history. Now, those of you who are over the age of 70 are going to smile about my story. You'll understand what I'm saying. Those of you who are under the age of 50, you'll have no idea what I'm talking about. It'll be a bit of a history lesson. And if you're from across the pond, if you're over in another country other than Canada, the United States, you'll say what you always do is, well, they do things a bit different in the Americas. All right, let's go back to the year. The year is 1960. Well, we're actually going to go back a little farther than that because I was born in Edmonton, Alberta in 1952. And in 1957, my parents bought this house that you see on the screen, and that's where I was raised. Now, in 1960, they purchased, get a load of this, they purchased an Electra Home television. An Electra Home. Remember the big, the big models, the great big, uh, it came in a cabinet and it had a big CRT uh, screen in it, and that was a color television. And I was a young boy. I remember we had the first color television on our street. So Friday evenings, my parents would often have uh, people over, and they would all be sitting in the front room, all squealing, ooing, and awing about the color picture. Now, as I remember this as a little guy, uh, I remember that being sort of odd, because the faces were yellow, green, or red, and my father was constantly getting up to adjust the rabbit ears on the TV. And as someone else came in and sat down and mom got a chair for them, then again, he had to adjust those rabbit ears. And the color, <laughs> the faces were all weird colors. I always thought black and white was better, so I'd go down to our family room downstairs and just watch things in black and white. But there'd be squealing and ooing and awing of all this brand new color TV, which was first in on our street. Well, it wasn't too long, probably a couple of years later in the early 60s, where a uh, big announcement came and we were getting cable vision. And this was a big announcement. And then, of course, the red, green, and yellow faces all went away, and we had normal color, and everyone was happy with color TV. Now, in 1969, I was 17 years old, and I had just graduated from high school. I decided to go over to Europe and backpack around. Remember the $3 a day thing you could do? Well, I flew over from Edmonton to London, with Wardair Airlines, a big charter firm that was uh, came in Canada with Max Ward, and he um, it was three hundred dollars return. So I went over and backpacked around Europe for a month, and I was absolutely shocked what I saw. First of all, the cars were so old. Oh my gosh, that was weird. Uh, back in Canada, the United States, we we had big big things were happening. There was uh, economic. Uh, there was economic might. We had uh, new cars coming. We had big freeways being developed. Lots of exciting things happening. But man, it was just weird with those old cars. And also those tiny little roads that people drove these old cars down. I thought people seemed happy and I sort of had a good time, but it was, it was a bit weird. And then most people didn't have television. They had, uh, they had, of course, uh, Few people had black and white TVs, and of course, they were all on the rabbit ears. But most people didn't have television. So I was really happy when I got back from Europe, and I got back to color television. Elvis Presley 
and big cars and big roads and lots of fun things that we could do. I thought it was a bit weird. Anyway, uh, that's how it was back in 1969. What's important to understand is that the recovery of post-war Europe took another 15 years longer than the United States recovery. Now, remember when um, the war was over and all the servicemen come back into the United States and Canada, the factories were at top production. The economy was moving. And of course, those people uh, had jobs and got things moving. And so uh, life was pretty exciting times in the 60s in Canada, the United States, but not so much in Europe as the recovery still hadn't been completed and wouldn't happen for another, oh, about 10 years. Why is this important? Well, remember I talked about cable. Remember I talked about getting cable. Well, everybody in Canada, the United States, they, they laid millions of miles of cable. Millions, maybe, I don't know, it was a lot of cable that everybody had cable. Even small little towns had, had cable companies. Everybody had cable TV because you could get color TV. It was amazing how much cable, the coaxial cable that they laid. And even small towns would have like Bob the Barber would, would, would have a Bob the Barber and a cable company. He'd maybe call it Bob's Barber and Cable Company. And you'd get a few people together and string some cable. And then they would cable a bunch of houses. And we've all cabled things in our homes. And we know that coaxial cable is easy to uh, split and connect. And so it wasn't really that difficult. And so what we had is a huge network of cable companies, small cable companies, but lots of them all across all across both countries. Now this, of course, did not happen in Europe. There were no cable companies. This, this period of time was different. And so it was a bit unique in what we were seeing. So something happened in 1980 that would change the world as we know it. Let me think, what was that? I'll give you a second to think about that. Uh, of course, it was the internet. The internet was created. And you remember those squeaky little dial-up modems that we had? I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure all the old people remember that. Those squeaky little dial-up modems that allowed us co to connect to bulletin boards and some things that, because the internet really didn't do very much back when it first came online. But then quickly, uh, we knew that it was going to be successful. So these uh, telephone modems that we're using wasn't really going to work. And so the cable companies figured out that you could actually transmit a internet signal, a digital signal, down a coaxial cable. And this was pretty cool. This was this was big stuff. And of course, uh, the rest is history, as, as you know. And so what happened in, I'll talk about Canada. First of all, in Western Canada, uh, the, uh, a company by the name of Shaw Cable from Edmonton started to purchase and buy up uh, smaller cable companies and move west towards British Columbia and east towards, uh, towards Winnipeg. And they bought up all the, the cable companies, uh, the small cable companies that were, uh, that were providing cable television because people wanted the internet. And that was a more complicated system and required fiber optic lines to be the main trunk lines to transmit all this, this data. And this, of course, happened in the United States as well with uh, Cox Cable and Comcast. All these companies were formed who would be able to have the technology to bring, to bring internet to, to you in, as a high-speed cable service. But to do that was much more complicated. So old Bob with his uh, barber and cable uh, cable service just didn't work out very well because he didn't really understand all that technology. And so everyone was excited as, as, as this all grew. And that's how cable companies started to provide internet services. I remember on Vancouver Island here, uh, our, uh, our Comox Valley here, quickly uh, converted, the, they sold out right away to Shaw, and we were able to get fairly quickly high-speed internet into, the, into our homes. And that was a really exciting time. Uh, I remember up, in, uh, up on the northern part of the island, uh, a friend of mine was a liquor store management manager, and he had a, um, 
He had the cable services on the northern end of the island. Uh, he was quickly bought out. He bought a big yacht and a mansion down island, and I haven't seen him since. The cable company, Shaw in particular, bought out all. There was nobody left. He, they bought out everybody and ran um, ran the large fiber optic lines down that were able to provide uh, cable, um, high-speed cable internet service to your homes. So I want you to remember that if you have cable TV in your home, what you really have is fiber optic lines, transmission lines to the telephone pole. And that last part, that last section is cable. Now, if you have fiber optic to your home through a fiber optic company, then transmission line is, is fiber optic. But there is a fiber optic line that goes from your pole to your to your to your home. So it's that just that the cable part is just that part from the telephone pole into your house. So why is so why is this important? Why am I talking about this? Well, if you remember back to my trip in that period when I went to Europe, the very first time there was no cable. Well, well they were cabling in Canada, the United States in that whole post-war boom that never happened anywhere else in the world. So by the time 1980 came along and we have internet and the cable companies in Canada, the United States figured out that they could transmit high speed data to you in your home, Europe had already passed that and had other options for them. And so they never went to the cabling. And so cabling and the idea of a cable company providing internet is really only a Canada and US uh, idea. If you travel to all, so I've traveled to Southeast Asia many times, Australia a lot of times because my daughter lives there. And uh, I used to work at Schiphol Airport in, in Holland. I can tell you that these countries, if you talk about cable television, by the large, they don't have that. They've never heard of it. It's just something that occurred in the Americas. So when you're looking at cutting the cord, you're thinking, well, how am I going to do this? What's happening with these cable company? I'm going to cut the cord. It's, it's perfectly normal. The rest of the world doesn't have cable and they have very fast. Some of the most advanced and well-developed internet services are in Southeast Asia, uh, India, and of course, China. And this is why when I talked last week about saving money, is the conversion to 5G, which will happen, is that is what is going to replace the old cable companies. So that's a little bit of history about cable services and how they came to be. I thought it might be something you might be interested in. So anyway, be sure and watch that other video I made last week. I'll put the link up above. Now I'd like to draw your attention to an article that was published this week from the FCC. Let me read it. This week, FCC chairman, Jessica Rosenworcel announced a new plan to bring 5G coverage to more than 14 million American homes and businesses in rural America. This plan comes from new data acquired in its updated broadband coverage map with the hope of bringing 5G internet to Americans who need it. For the first time in our history of supporting wireless networks through a universal service system, this agency has comprehensive data about where service is and not all across the country, said Chairman Rosenworcel. This will be the foundation of our plan to expand the 5G service in rural America to where it is needed most, where people live, work, and travel. So in summary, why do we have cable companies? Well, cable companies provided a valuable resource for us in the 50s and 60s to allow cable vision to our homes so we could watch television. As, as the internet developed in the 80s, they provided high-speed internet to our homes so we wouldn't have to use those old squeaky modems. However, technology has moved ahead and this coaxial cable, which is the only thing connecting you from your telephone pole to your house is the limiting factor now in getting high-speed internet into your home. With 5G technology providing high-speed internet now to your home, I think the time has come to say goodbye to the old coaxial cable. As I said in my video last week, as we switch and cut the cord, 
on our cable services. Look for 5G technology from the big three. You're going to find some good competition and probably a lot cheaper prices if you look. It's Ron Brown with Tech for Senior. Hopefully you've had a lot of fun listening to me ramble on about cable companies. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please don't forget the like and subscribe, and we'll see you again soon. Bye now. Thank you.